There's a lot of discussion about what optimal ketone levels are, what we should be striving for. And a lot of what we teach, uh, mostly at the Renew program, is we're getting them to the state of being fat adapted. So the body's efficient on running on fat uh, compared to glucose. Um, and then we bring them down to a low level, right? So it's a lower carb making sustainability, increased enjoyability. So we shoot for low level, but but what do you know or what do you think about more of an optimal level of ketones to try to achieve? I think that was part of what I was getting to that went on a little tangent yes. there. But my assumption here is that, so in our paper that we published in 2019, we used time-restricted feeding and we used ketogenic diet. When we treated the rats with a ketogenic diet, they would get to BHB levels of like 5 millimolar, which is very high. That's a very high level. That's like a therapeutic ketogenic state. But when we did the time-restricted feeding, we would only increase them by like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 above their baseline. So they're very small changes. What we still saw dramatic effects on the kidneys. So we saw that there was a, a lot of regression. All of these pathways that we would expect be affected by PKD were improved. So what that kind of implied to me was, okay, there's some switch that's there and BHB could be the marker, but it might not necessarily be the end-all be-all. It could also mean that small changes in BHB are sufficient to cause big changes in the kidney. So it could be both. I've only seen one study that's ever looked at Specifically, they did a CAT scan or a PET scan looking at, you know, where does BHB get consumed by the radio label, the BHB, and then they give it to an animal. Okay, they can see that the heart and the kidneys are the, the main organs that consume it. So if you were to eat BHB, drink it, most of it would get consumed before you measure it again. You don't know exactly what the, is being experienced by the kidney. So even though you're only seeing a very small increase on the blood meter, it doesn't mean that the kidney's not seeing something different. That is really important because so many patients who are doing a ketogenic approach get frustrated by their actual ketone numbers. So that was a excellent, excellent point for them to yeah, I, keep in mind. The other thing about the, the BHB story is that we know there's a, a relationship between the binding of receptors to the amount of a substance there is. And with BHB, it has a low affinity receptor. Um, it's, it has a few different receptors that binds to, but they're low affinity, meaning that they don't get activated until you reach one millimolar or like 0.5 oh. is like, I think you get 25% activation and then you get to okay. one millimolar and then you get half of all of them activated. And then when you get to like two and three millimolar, they're like all turned on. The known receptors for BHB fall into that category. If that was the goal, then yes, higher BHB levels would activate those receptors. And those are specifically, the ones that have been studied the most are located on immune cells. So if you wanted okay. to activate those immune cells specifically, then you would need to get those BHB levels up to get to the to that activation level. If you're talking about processes that we know a little less about, but they're all intracellular, and so those don't require the same concentrations of BHB necessarily, and certain cells could have the ability to concentrate BHB inside of them to get more access to BHB that they wouldn't have if the other cells would see. So if a cell has a transporter for BHB, which they exist on cells in the kidney, they actually could be pulling BHB in and getting a higher concentration intracellularly than what you would expect that they're just using it because they're actively pulling it in. And it might be their location in the kidney could be changing the concentration of BHB. That's part of what the kidney does is it, the filtrate that comes through the, the kidney goes through the nephron and it, as fluid traverses the nephron, <laughs> it changes concentration of the amount of solute that's in the, the filtrate along with the amount of water. And so it's different portions of the nephron. They actually are experiencing different concentrations of solutes. And so it could be that at some portion of the nephron, they're much more susceptible to I'm pulling in BHB because the concentration's changing. And we know that BHB is involved in the transportation of sodium in the kidney. So part of what BHB is, is it exchanges sodium for BHB. 
So that's part of why it looks like BHB improves glomerular filtration as well. It's, it's exchanging the sodium concentration for the BHB and the nephron and improves the flow rate. Interesting.